Welcome to Hogs Behind the Scenes Week, day number one. Let's head into the airport. So I'll give you a little tour, and today we're gonna to do something kind of a little bit different. I've been wanting to do this for a long time. For years I worked alone, so it was too hard to ever film, really film anything. So I'm gonna just grab a lot of bits and pieces this week just to show you behind the scenes, kind of what happens, what goes on, and what we do. So let's head inside. So early. So what happens on Monday morning. Really? Yeah, feel free to use this whatever okay. you're stable, throw your stuff up here. Let me see your um, pilot certificate too. Also. Okay. Kenny, Bruce. How you doing? Bruce. Good. Nice Good. to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm here early. Nice shirt. Sure. Where'd you get that? You like that? You like that? Well, I'm trying to, you know, I'm, I'm renewing my CFI online and I just did the topic of looking professional, acting professional, you know, nice. so, you know, I thought maybe I'd show up, support the hogs, you know, because I am representing you, obviously. Well, that's so. awesome. And you're awesome, so. I, I try. Let's see your, yeah, medical too. Just yeah. Medical. Well, we're going to look into it. Gary talked to the FAA and a couple months process to get approved. Then. Well, you know what I noticed too is, which irritates me, I'm doing it through AOPA, you know, and it's like helicopters are the stepchildren. Mm -hmm. There is nothing. They're, they haven't mentioned the word helicopter at, at all, and I'm right. halfway through it. Right. Well, we're going to see what we can do about that. Good morning, boss. Smile, you're on candid camera. So what we're doing this week, I hadn't told you this yet, we're doing behind the scenes all week. Uh -huh. I kind of did an intro thing with Glory over the weekend. You know, we shot a little bit of the R22 stuff this weekend, but this is day one. Well, I get here and I fire up this beast of a computer and I check YouTube comments and site comments and emails, check text messages and voicemails and just basically serve our customer base for at least the first hour of my day. That's awesome. We love it. Well, I got a couple uh, testimonials this morning. Um, I'll post you a copy of them. I'll also put them in our testimonial blog that we have going. Nice place to keep track of them all. Awesome. And the guys from Australia talking about how uh, Helicopter Ground helped him get his rating. Nice. We get a lot of people from Australia. I asked him if he could send us a video of uh, basically the same thing in video form for us and I'll send him a free t-shirt. Awesome. So I'll just read this to you though. It's pretty good to come in Monday morning and see stuff like this. I wouldn't have passed some of my, some of my exams without it, he says. Nice. Just, I just love it when we get feedback like that. We got a couple of them. Oh, reference the instrument. I've got it all lined up with uh, the owner and I'll be going over there probably Thursday unless Wednesday weather clears up. I've been watching the Tafts. Awesome. Okay. How many people do you have lined up already for the instrument to fly? A just, couple, right? Just two. Just two? Okay. Currently. It would be nice to see if, um, see them live with us on Live Tuesday. No charts. And then maybe another Tuesday we do the actual doing all the math and plotting and all that stuff. Yes, because if, uh, if we actually go through like a check ride flight plan that they're going to have to complete uh, figuring, uh, you know, magnetic variation, deviation, and uh, wind correction angles, uh, checkpoints along the route uh, for dead reckoning, we probably should just make that a Tuesday on its own. And uh, that video will just help pilots for a long time in the future if we leave it up. Cool. Anything else? Anything else big we need to mention? No, I think that's it. Covers it for about uh, now, doesn't it? I'm sure I'll have questions once I get to the end of my emails here this morning. Cool. Back to Let's, we need to fix this and get this okay. boy together. Okay. And then we'll have this as your... Okay. Let me light up. Yeah, I can. I got an old white out, but I don't know if it works. All right, well, maybe hold it apart. Maybe. All right, so that's a quick update with Gary on what's happening there. Chris is in there with her. Oh, remember getting um, acclimated, going through the log books and stuff. I'm going to try not to stick the camera too much in his face until he gets warmed up to us just a little bit. But I know what I need to mention next. Taz Chrisman. The computer fired up here. And, oh, yeah, I know what I need to mention. Taz Chrisman. So I want to give you a little background on how we handle HOGS member training when they come here. We've already got an idea what, what he needs. He sent us the requirements. 
He wants to do as much as he can in a week and try to have a check ride by the end of the week. Now this is Monday, so we know there's always weather issues, could be maintenance issues. There's lots of things that can come into play. But when we do uh, bring somebody in to finish them up, we make sure that they know to go through the videos, go through ground school as many times as they can, be as prepared before they get here. And then all three of us work with them when they get here. And for example, with this young man, Gary will be doing ground with him. Chris will be doing most all the flying with him. He'll be doing some ground. He's over there right now, going over the log book, checking everything. Because that's one of the biggest problems when people show up is, you know, what's in their log book? To have they had the proper endorsements? So Chris is going all going over all that stuff with him. Chris works part time. He's a full time police officer, so he works afternoon shifts. So he'll start early with this young man, and then I'll jump in and help kind of both areas. I'll do a little ground with him after Chris leaves, and I can jump in the aircraft and fly with him as well. So he'll have three of us getting you know input from three different people every day pretty much eight hours a day Monday through Friday and we'll you know evaluate him over the next day or two and see if we can have the check ride pulled off by the end of the week that's gonna be part of the fun part of the a fun part of the story behind the scenes just showing you how we bring in a hogs member and try to help them get finished up and get a rating we we do it often we have a lot of people that travel here that have had problems elsewhere that's not totally uncommon in this industry there's a lot of great infl flight instruction out there okay and there are a lot of great flight schools out there but we also know there are some places that aren't so good and there are some instructors that you know don't do such a good job either and just get out there and get somebody's logbook racked up with hours and don't do the ground with them and really work with them like they need. We're going to keep you informed on that through the week and see how that goes. So, hopefully we'll get the flying in. Hi Kenny Keller. I'm going to take a forklift and put it under one of the skids and while you're in there with him I'll lift, lower, you know, it'd be a simulator basically. Yeah, simulator, yeah inside the hangar <laughs> we'll just put the foggles on so yeah not as much flying as what uh, I thought but that's good if the weather will cooperate maybe we'll get it done so give us a rundown how's he look on hours and requirements and what he needs uh, logbook looks good he needs uh, five hours of instrument time and he needs a two-hour dual VFR night Cross country. Um, other thing, everything else he meets, and we've he's been signed off to act as PIC in an aircraft that he's not rated for, and he's been signed off for the SFAR 73 awareness training. And now we're going to go down to the aircraft, do a pre-flight, make sure he knows how to do that, and then we'll pull out the POH. And um, he says he's uh, he would like more training and weight and balance, so we'll probably do that. The so technically seven hours of flying is all he is required to get his requirements done and then whatever he needs to be check right proficient. Correct, yeah. So it's doable, been, so flying wise it's doable, weather permitting, it's doable. I'm assuming if he, if he flies like Roland and Austin that we're probably not gonna have any issues with the maneuvers. Right. I think our biggest issue right now is gonna be Indiana weather in January. Right, which so, we, we all know that going into it. Uh, I'll have to contact the examiner and see if he can get on. I haven't talked to the examiner yet because of I wanted to go through and see if it was even doable to get there first. All right, cool. Can we follow you guys around while you're pre-flighting? Sure. Do you yeah, care? we're going to go down the aircraft. He's going to pull out the checklist. I want to make sure he's comfortable with doing uh, pre-flight on the aircraft, and then uh, we'll go from there probably ask some right. questions. All right, so why don't you grab the checklist? It's imperative when you go for your check ride that you have the checklist, even though you've probably pre flighted it a hundred times. Yeah. You will probably look over half. Put the flashlight out here. Flying a whole lot, huh? Yeah, it's a pretty nice aircraft. Got those guys rolling in the office. Things are looking good already on a Monday. And I want to elaborate on Taz Chrisman. Taz is from Indiana. He now lives in Vegas. So he, Taz is from a little town not far from where we're at in Plymouth. He's been flying 20 years, I believe. 
He is in the Air Force. He's an airplane instructor, a helicopter flight instructor. I did a video on Taz a few months ago about uh, his nomination, or us nominating him for Flight Instructor of the Year. I'll put that link in the description box below if you want to go and take a look at that. So we're really proud of Taz. He's won his region for Flight Instructor of the Year and now still going for Flight Instructor of the Year uh, for on a national basis. He performs in our instrument videos. He's been with us on Live Training Tuesday two to three times now, and I'm sure you're gonna see more of Taz in the future. So check that, that uh, link down below if you wanna see the video we did about his nomination. It's a nice little place to train, Class G Airport. Pretty random. That's pretty random. Follow me to work type video. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Some people might want to see it. Yeah. What does Kenny Keller do? How does he put? I want to show you Gary's office. He's got it decorated up real nice. This is our old green screen room. Turn it in a nice room. Serial number. I gave the log books to the the man. That's what entertained me with them was I had a guy from the FA call. Then I had a guy from the NTSB call. Then I had a different guy from the NTSB call me add something or not say something and you guys say well you told this guy that uh you know but you what'd you do forget to tell me that you know why don't you guys figure out who's doing what and then i will provide what you want i said I, i'm tired of telling my story three and four times and then you're going to send me paperwork so i can tell it again especially since the faa is sitting here talking to me and he's like, uh, now how many hours do you have uh, total? How many hours do you have in the last 90 days, 60 days, blah, blah, Okay, how many hours in this aircraft? And every time I went to open my logbook with the calculator, he's like, no, just estimate. Earlier this morning, well, you know, he's a different entity and I need to, I'm like, can't you email him, you know? All right, estimate. We're gonna go try to go fly. <laughs> so, <laughs> have fun. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Hi, Kenny Keller. First impression, first hour together. I'll tell you what, uh, uh, ground knowledge is pretty solid. Uh, we were talking. Um, I he, used, he used helicopter online ground school for that, correct? That's right. <laughs> um, and I think flying is going to be pretty good. Uh, it was tough today because we went out there and it's 18 gusting to 25. Yeah. Um, Pretty tough for a first time, right. new airport, new instructor, never been here before, new but, people. But uh, he, he seems he's got a grasp on things and uh, I'll tell you what, we turned south right into the wind and we were had like 60 indicated and it didn't even look like we were moving. So it was, nice. it's pretty good. But uh, he, he needs some hood time so we just got out. We did a little bit of hovering just to see where I could, see if I could kind of get a feeling on things with him 
and then we was like, well, let's just get out of here and we'll get some hood time. So that's what we did. So I venture to say, pretty pretty close to where the Austin and Rollin were at. Yeah. Skill wise, knowledge wise, showed up pretty well prepared. Where you know I, we just got to put the finishing touches yeah. on. I asked him. I said, what's your uh, class G visibility and cloud clearance? And he went, oh, below 1,200 AGO, it's this. But above 10,000, it's this. I'm like, nice. hey, all I needed to know was, you know, just a simple right. half mile, <laughs> uh, half mile and clear clouds a day. But he gave me the whole scoop. I think uh, Gary's going to be pretty easy to just go over the stuff and make sure. But I think it's going to be pretty easy. So you think you'd call the examiner today? I would probably call the examiner on my way home and just, just see. To see if he's even available Friday, if everything, weather, yeah, blah, we, blah, uh, blah. Yeah, we got to get those requirements in, and I think we can do it. You may have to be, old Kenny Keller may have to get in the aircraft and help out a little bit. Maybe. It's all right. I like, um, I like the finishing touches. It's perfect. Because personally, I don't like to fly the day before yeah. the check ride. I don't know how how you are. I don't like. And then uh, if we happen to go out, we'll see. I'll look at weather. Maybe I can do something with work. Okay. Or maybe I can get over here tomorrow after work if you want to do a late night Tuesday. Yeah, I can do we that. We can come in later on, on Wednesday or something. Awesome. Perfect. And then, bam, the day is done. It's one. It's it's 2.27 a.m. I gotta show you this. This is really more for Chief Pilot Gary Cleveland that made the statement today, well, you're never here. Uh, Gary's here eight hours a day, five days a week. I choose to work like Monday through Thursday, 12 hours a day. So there you go. But hey, I'm not complaining. There was more I wanted to do with this video, but that's an entire day. So I got to end day one so we can get back here tomorrow for live training Tuesday. Get ready to go Ohio, Ohio see Jed. Make sure Gary's ready to go to Ohio and get the Instrum and everything else we got going on with our Hawks member here and make sure Chris is going to be here. So that's the end of day one. That's actually day two at 2.28 a.m., but we're still calling it day one. So see you later today in day two.